Welcome back everyone. This is the third in a five-part series on how to calculate your carbon footprint. So far, we've looked at setting your reporting boundary and screening carbon emitting activities. So hopefully at this stage, you've a nice hierarchy diagram that sets out your organizational boundary according to your boundary approach. And under that, you have a list of activities which have been categorized against the different WRI GHG protocol scopes. Now, it's time to hit the big, and usually quite messy button for data collection. Look at each of your activities and consider whether or not you've any data available that may help you to quantify your carbon emissions for that activity. As a general rule, spend data is the worst type of data you can use to calculate your carbon emissions. So wherever possible, look for the raw data that matches the emissions factor for that activity. You can do this by reviewing the UK's emissions conversion factors or by using a public database such as Climate IQ. But a few common examples of carbon emitting activities and their underlying activity units are as follows. Electricity consumption in kilowatt hours, fuel consumption in litres, waste in tonnes and air travel in kilometres. To help manage this process, I typically set up a data collection spreadsheet at the front of my carbon emissions workbook. Note down in detail who is responsible for the management of these different data sets. For example, you might find that the facility team has details on the company's electricity and natural gas consumption, whilst the finance team has the most detail on business travel. Begin to log who holds what data in which format and which areas of the company that data relates to, ensuring that all data is relevant to your reporting year. If there are gaps, make notes on what could be missing and how it might be resolved by different data sets from across the business. Be warned, in some cases you may need to collect data from your suppliers and they may require a non-disclosure agreement to reassure them that you'll use their data confidentially. When you receive the data, file it in an orderly manner so it's easy to find again and it's clear how each file relates to the structure of your organisation or the structure of your carbon footprint. Once you've collated the data relating to your carbon footprint, it's time to get to the business end of things. In the next couple of videos, we'll talk about how to assess your data quality and finally, how to calculate your carbon emissions. If you've got any questions, suggestions or feedback, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. And as always, please like and subscribe. Thanks.